My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on this most sacred night, in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters, scattered throughout the world, to come together mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death. So let us pray. The light of Christ, thanks be to God.
Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty king's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all quarters of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and trial and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, Standing in the awesome glory of this holy light, invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy among the Levites, May pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery and Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night when with a pillar of fire banish the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, 
to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. Oh, truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day. Dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this, your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor, a fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. O oh, 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 truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere on death to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the morning star that never sets. Christ, your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And so, dear friends, our solemn Easter vigil has begun. Join with us now as we listen to the Holy Scriptures, which tell the beautiful story of salvation, beginning with the creation of the world and continuing through God's favor with his chosen people and leading us to new life in Christ. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, 
when God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed the first day. Then God said, Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed, the second day. Then God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin, so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin, and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth, and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with seeds in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed the fourth day. Then God said, Let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things on the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all of the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant 
all over the earth, and every tree that has seed bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed, since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day from all of the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in its beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever. And down. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, and you lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God who had been leading Israel camp, Israel's camp now moved and ran around behind them. The column of cloud also 
leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night so that it turned into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land with water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of, a, of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and so he clogged their chariot wheels and they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. When the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left, thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot is cast into the sea. Word of the Lord.
Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increased the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue, through Christ our Lord. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be sla in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him we know that Christ raised from the dead dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves 
as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus, the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached embraced his feet, and did him homage. Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. 
Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. He is not here. He has been raised, just as he said. It's a bit odd that for the greatest and most important liturgy of our Catholic faith, we begin this night, we began a moment ago, in semi-darkness. Normally our service begins at 8 because the church prescribes that the vigil must begin at dusk. We were granted an earlier start because of this pandemic and the curfews in many of our towns and cities. But there's a meaning, a very important meaning in the fact that we begin the vigil, the Easter vigil, at dusk in the dark. Because the dark is like death. It's like a dark, damp, chilly tomb. It was dark when Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. It was very early that morning. And we, on this holy night, we enter into that mystery of Jesus' death before we see and celebrate his resurrection. For that is like light piercing through this death-like darkness. Before Jesus rose, he had to die. As is often said, we can't have Easter without a good Friday. The darkness always precedes the light. And my friends, you and I, we need this night. We need it because death, for most of us, is often too much to stomach. For any one of us who has lost someone special, Death is maybe the greatest grief we can bear. And I know that we often find it hard to imagine that our love for someone can endure that kind of separation caused by death. The story of Jesus, risen from the dead tonight, on one sense, seems almost too good to be true. And yet, if Jesus is alive, then as God has promised, you too and I will live forever. I believe that there are some things in life that can't be put into words. There are experiences that each of us have had that it just seems to go beyond the power of language to describe it. I think love is one of those realities. For anyone who has truly been in love, there's an unmeasurable quality of life that's present in that relationship. You know what I mean. It's it's awfully difficult to explain sometimes to people, to express your true feelings. You could buy up every single Hallmark card there is and still not capture all that you feel about someone you truly love. And that is what this night, this holy night, is about. God's great love. Jesus is for us. Now I must confess to you that a week ago, part of me was dreading going through this holy week. Holy week and in isolation and with an empty church. The weight worry of all this coronavirus was almost too much. And yet, I've come to find that in the midst of all this concern and death and loss and uncertainty of when it might end, I've come to realize that something truly incredible is happening here. And I believe we can call it the Paschal Mystery. 
the journey as Jesus did, and so to us, the life, painful death, and resurrection. It's a new life with hope. St. Paul tonight reminded us very beautifully and very powerfully in his writing the epistle to the Romans. From chapter 6 we heard, For just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so too we might live in that newness of life. I hope and I pray that our battle with coronavirus is not in vain, that we have indeed learned a few things about our lives, namely, for one thing, how much we need other people and how much other people need us. And the church, for instance, will never be just one person. St. Mary Magdalene, our beloved patron here, we just heard the story of her in tonight's gospel. We honor her, we venerate her as that person among the first to meet the risen Lord. But she didn't keep it inside and remain alone with that. She ran to tell the disciples. She brought the good news to them and to the world. Well, so should we. We should speak of good news, not despair, fear, worry with one another. So my friends, tonight we're in that garden with Mary Magdalene. We began our service in semi-darkness. We too stand inside that empty tomb and we watch that stone rolled away. We too catch a glimpse of that Easter light, that flame shining through the darkness, a light that's meant to herald Easter and the risen Christ. That is the whole meaning of the beautiful hymn known to us as the Exalted that Father Don just sang for us earlier in our liturgy. It's an acknowledgement of proclaiming that the light of Christ and his abiding presence in our world that light can conquer all that is dark and fearful in the world. I think one thing for sure about this worldwide pandemic, changes that would have been unthinkable three months ago are actually happening. When I read of several countries in Asia noting that the air quality has improved incredibly, and that in some parts of the globe, warring parties in a number of places have declared ceasefires. Maybe these won't last. I pray they will. But I do think that they remind us that our human problems don't need to last forever. Jesus stayed dead in the tomb for only a brief while before he was risen to eternal life. Death will never have the final say whenever we make space for hope. And so my friends, I join you with this kind of different Easter that we celebrate. And I find on this holy night that I'm incredibly thankful for my faith. To know that Jesus is not locked in that grave covered by some huge stone. I'm so grateful to all those who have inspired me, who have challenged me to continue to live as a good Christian man and as a priest of God. I'm grateful to all of you and to my fellow ministers and servers here for we share in this Holy Mass. As weird as it has been to celebrate Holy Week in isolation and through a camera lens, I do believe that our faith has been strengthened. It's maybe just that our real celebration of Easter is delayed a few more weeks. But you see, every day I dream about that day when all of you, our parishioners and friends, are back here filling this beautiful church and lifting the roof off with our songs and our joy. And for anyone, I would say, who maybe in past times has grown slack or weak in their faith, I pray that these recent months will renew in them a hunger and 
thirst for real closeness to God. May we all come from this with a greater appreciation of what it truly means to be the body of Christ and our hunger and desire for the Eucharist. Because I do believe that even in the darkest hour of this crisis, the light of Christ will shine through. For Jesus is truly risen. Hallelujah. He will not die again. And I pray that you may be a ray of light to others in these coming weeks. Happy Easter. My dear people of God, on this holy night, the church invites us to renew those promises made at our baptism. For Easter is a symbol of our connection with that wonderful sacrament which initiated us, opened the door of our pathway into God and into this way of faith. And so on this holy night, I invite you in your own homes to join us here in this sanctuary as we speak very proudly and willingly our desire to renew those promises made at baptism. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? And do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered, died, and was buried, and who rose from the dead where he's seated at God's right hand? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? My friends, this is our faith. This is the faith of our Church. Let us always be proud to profess it through Christ our Savior. Amen. So, my dear friends, having been renewed in faith, let us now turn to the Lord and present our, our petitions and needs to Him. For the Church, the light of Christ, that we may light up our darkened world, like this Paschal candle, the symbol of the risen Christ among us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the leaders of our world as we struggle in these days of the pandemic, that this Easter may remind all humankind that Jesus is Lord of all and the true hope of our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we right prayer. For those who do not know the risen Lord, may their minds and hearts be open to receive the good news that Jesus is risen from the dead. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly baptized and all those received into our Catholic faith, may they grow in love of the Lord in whose risen life they share and be encouraged by our baptismal commitment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they might one day rejoice in Jesus' promise of the resurrection, that all who believe in him will share eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we praise you and thank you on this night for the gift of your Son, Jesus, who is a radiant light in the darkness of our world. May that light heal us and warm our hearts so that we may be effective witnesses of your goodness to others in the world. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with these sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Do that again. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We give it unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is the right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times, yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by this same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts be brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this mystery. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. celebrate this memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon this offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Mary Magdalene and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, especially all those for whom we now pray. There, Lord, in your glory, we too hope to enjoy forever in the fullness of your love, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we join together with one voice as together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the risen Lord be with all of you. Behold Jesus Christ, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, my soul shall be.
conscious of all of you joining us uh, on Facebook Live and our recording of this Mass, share with you and pray with you this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. Pour out upon us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this Paschal Sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Before our final blessing, a reminder to all of our parishioners that we do have holy water that is um, at the doors of the church, the main door of the church, and also at the side door by the Adoration Chapel. And there is also a sheet for you to be able to renew your baptismal promises with your family. And so you're welcome to come tomorrow morning. The church will be open from around 7 or so um, until noon. We will close the church itself during the time that our 9 o'clock Mass will be going on and being recorded for Easter Sunday, but please feel free to come tomorrow and receive the holy water and the blessing, baptismal promise. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you through tonight's Easter solemnity, and in his compassion may he defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life and the resurrection of his only begotten endow you now with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of this Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to all those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.